So this is the Corsair H100X all-in-one CPU liquid cooler. Now I've purchased this, uh, it was cheap, it was £68 on Amazon, and I purchased it because, well, I do have a Noctua D15S, I think it's absolutely superb, but I've got quite a small case and there's not much room in there, and I always like to tinker with my PC and just to change the RAM or uh, remove an NVMe SSD and swap it out. It's just a bit of a chore because the CPU cooler takes up so much space. So I purchased this. I'm going to install this and um, it should perform really well. But what I'm interested in for this video is I'm going to do a comparison for peak temperatures between the two. So I'm going to run Cinebench R20 for 30 minutes. Uh, take the um, peak temperature for the Noctua D15S and then I'll do the same for this and we can have a comparison to see which one performs better under full load. Okay, time for me to uh, install it. Okay, so here is an image with the Noctua installed. And as you can see, there's very little access to the fans, the NVMe SSD, the RAM, etc., etc. With the Corsair H100X installed, we have lots of room. We have full access to the top half of the motherboard. And as you can see, the orientation of the H100X, I have the pipes at the bottom as per recommended by Gamers Nexus. I ran Cinebench for over 50 minutes to make sure the system was fully up to temperature and the entire system was fully equalised. With the Noctua D15S, we can see here that after 50 minutes the CPU core clock is down to 4.067 GHz. And onward to the temperature we can see that it peaked at 80 degrees, which isn't half bad considering that the system was on full load for 50 minutes. Now onto the Corsair H100X. So before running Cinebench and the benchmark again for 50 minutes, I made sure that I tuned the Corsair H100X fans to be no louder than the fans previously when I had the Noctua installed. Now this is very important because we want a level playing field to make sure we get a fair result and obviously also it doesn't annoy me while I'm playing games. So on to the results, and as you can see, it's 73.8 degrees, so that's about 6 degrees lower. Now, I have to admit, I really did not think it would be that much lower. I honestly thought it would be roughly the same. So with lower temps, we get higher clocks, and as you can see, the CPU is running at 4.192 GHz, so that's quite the increase in performance due to the lower temperature. So, with my PC now being cooler and faster, it's probably a good time to end the video. So, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.